everyone, this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make a few things with the treasure box, the, the Christmas Dazzle treasure box. And we're going to focus on this component that came in the box. Of course, if you did not get the box, you can still do this tutorial. I show you several different ways to do this wire wrap. You don't or use these crystals actually. You don't actually have to wrap it the way I have done. And I've shown you a few different options. So you could just get a crystal of your own that's top drilled, just a nice large crystal. You could use a Swarovski, you could use a Chinese crystal. It doesn't matter. As long as it's a nice big crystal with a top drilled hole that you can fit your wire or a jump ring through. And that's all you'll need. And of course, a few other beads and things. So let's go ahead and look and see exactly what we'll need. Let me just give you a glance at this necklace. It doesn't look very good laying out, but I put it on a neck model and took a picture of it in the, in the intro so you could see. But I'm gonna give you a close up here of the dangle portion. And it's it's just really pretty. It just I put it on my neck and it dangles down your chest, just gorgeous. I also give you an option just to do a really simple piece like this. And some of these little pinch bales, I'll, I'll tell you where you can get those. And then I just made a simpler piece like this, just putting it on chain. And then, of course, a couple pair of earrings. Let's go ahead and look and see what it takes to make this project okay. today. For this particular project, we are going to be using five of the large top drilled pendant beads that are in your box. We will be using some of the bead caps. We will be using some of the six millimeter bicone crystals, the four millimeter round electroplated glass beads, the eight by six millimeter red crystals. We will be using one of the clasps and we will be using some of the jump rings, some of the chain, and then adding to the box we will be using some head pins. These are just short little silver tone head pins and you can get these at budgetbeads.shop. I will leave a link. We will be using some crimp beads. I am using Beadalon size 2. We will be using some soft flex or any kind of beading wire you have on hand. I am using the medium. And we will be using some artistic wire. Actually, it doesn't have to be artistic wire, but 22 gauge soft wire. This is artistic wire that I'm using in the silver tone. You will also need to have round nose and flat nose and chain nose, pliers, some end cutters, and a crimping tool. And if you would like to have on hand some nylon nose pliers, they're always helpful. Not necessary, but helpful. So let's go ahead and get started on this project. Okay, to start this project, I'm going to show you how to wrap one of these crystals so that we can make a necklace with these. You can also use them for earrings. But if you do not feel like you can manage wrapping these after I show you, you can also just pop these on a large jump ring. This one is about 10 millimeters in diameter, and you don't want it, you want to have a gauge that will fit into your crystal. So this is about a 20 gauge, I'm guessing. And all you have to do is open it. Open it rather wide so you can see I'm holding half of the jump ring in my chain nose pliers and I just twisted the other half open with my flat nose pliers. And then you can generally drop these on the jump ring like this and then just close it. So if you feel that you do not want to go through the wrapping process and of course close it tight, I didn't, then you can do this also. It will work just fine. So let's go ahead and look at how to wrap. Okay, to wrap this pendant I have cut about seven inches of 22 gauge wire and I am just going to take the wire <clears throat> and put it through pendant. I'm going to bring it not quite halfway down so you can see that I have a lot more wire on this side than the other side and I'm just going to hold it 
and bring this end around, the short end around, and put it through the pendant again. Just like this. And then I'm just going to use my fingers to reduce the size of the loop that has been created. And then I'm going to pull the longer strand and the shorter strand until I get a loop around the top of the pendant, just like this. So you want to make it to where there's about, oh, maybe four millimeters from the tip of the pendant to the tip of your loop. So it's not a huge loop, but you don't want a really small one either. Plus, you won't be able to pull it incredibly small unless you're really pulling on it hard. And um, when you get resistance on it, then you know that you've gone about as far as you can, right about there. Then you're going to take this side, the short side, and you're just going to lay it down like this. Then we're going to take the longer side, <clears throat> and we're going to wrap it around the top of the bead. So let me get you close, see if I can stay in camera here. I'm going to start wrapping it, and I'm wrapping it right where I can see the hole of the pendant. You can kind of see a glow where the hole is. I'm going to wrap it right across there, and then I'm going to wrap it again, and again, and again, just laying the wire on top of the previous wraps. Uh, this is one method that you can do, and then there's another method that I will show you also. So I have got two wires like this. If you want to make a little curly cue on the front, because sometimes cutting your wires down and tucking them under doesn't work very well, but I'm going to show you that method too. But I'm going to show you a couple. So I have this wire right here. I'm going to cut it down just a little bit. Then I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm going to go to, from the very edge of the wire, the very end of it, at the very tip of my pliers here where it's the narrowest and just make a little loop in that wire and then reposition my hand and close that loop. So you've got a little loop like this and then you can take your flat nose pliers and you can turn it into a spiral. Then you can push that spiral on top of your coils. Then you can take the other wire, cut it, grab the end again at the narrow end of your pliers. And you can just turn it with your round nose pliers too like this if you'd like and just make a spiral. And sometimes all, each one will be a little bit different. You're not always going to get exactly the same spiral on each one. So your pendants may look a little bit different. And so I have a couple little spirals on this. And that's one way to do it. Let me grab another one and I will show you how to end it by tucking it under or just cutting it off. Okay, so I have prepared another one, just wrapped my wire around, pulled it through until I had the loop size I wanted. I'm going to push this one down, and then I'm going to beginning, begin wrapping with the longer wire. So again, I'm going to look at where the hole in the pendant is, and bring it across, and just start to wrap again. So I'm going to wrap twice, maybe three times. I'll go three times just to make sure it's secure and then I'm going to lift this wire up and try to cut it really short just like that let me back off a little so I stay in camera so now I have this little tiny tail guy here and I'm just going to push him gently against the crystal be careful because you'll scratch up your crystal or break it so be careful with it. And then I'm going to continue wrapping this one around until I cover that little wire. When I get past where that little wire is, right there, I'm going to cut this one off. Now you just want to make sure 
that you do about the same amount of loops around every time so that each one of your pendants will look a little bit the same. They don't have to be exact, but you want them to be pretty much the same. Now I'm going to cut this one off right about here and I'm going to try to tuck it under. Now sometimes you can tuck it under. I'm going to cut this a little shorter actually back here because right behind this little tail that I cut off from the other wire I can try to tuck my wire right underneath there. So I'm just going to bend it a little bit like this, push it up underneath these wires the best I can and push it in just like that. Now you cannot see that tail, it's not pokey, you're not going to feel it, and this is the way I prefer. However, sometimes that's a little bit difficult, and you may just end up cutting off your wire and just tucking it down the best you can with your pliers so that you can um, not feel it pokey. So either way is going to work. You either make a little spiral. Uh, I prefer this clean look also because when I make my spirals, they're not always the same. They're always a little different. So it depends on how you want to do it. Either way will work just fine. Then you're going to go ahead and make five crystals just like this. Or you can slide your jump ring through just like I showed you earlier and then move on to the next step. So go ahead and make five of these either way with your jump rings, your spiral, or your tucked in method and we'll be back. Okay, once you have your five crystals ready, then you're going to get your chain out. This chain is unwelded so we can open it up and we're going to use the some of the links as some of our um, jump rings to connect things. and. We're also going to use the a section of chain in between each of our little pendants here to connect them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count six of my links. One, two, three, four, five, six. And on the sixth one, I'm just going to open it up. So I'm just going to grab that sixth one. Now, sometimes the end you have to find it. It's usually the opposite way that you pick it up. So now I know my opening is right here and I'm just going to open this link. Just like that. Then I'm going to grab one of my pendants and I'm just going to put that link on that loop there. And then I'm going to take the other end. Make sure that your link closes well because these are twisted links so they can be a little bit more tricky to close. Just make sure you get them touching and closed. And then we're going to open the end link here. Let's see where does it open. It opens on this side. So I'm just going to open it and connect it to another one. Then I'm going to cut six more links and on this particular section, I'm going to hook three crystals together. So I'll get six more links and hook the three crystals together. And then we'll need one more le uh, length of six links just on its own on the other side. So let me get six more links here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let me back off so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to open this link and take my length of chain, connect this one. And like I said, make sure that your links close well because they are twisted chain and they close kind of differently. So just make sure they're touching nicely and then hook one more crystal on. Let me find the opening here. And see that one came completely off, but that's okay because I can, I did it upside down. So I can just grab my link, put it back on there, put this one on here and close my link. And that's kind of deceiving. 
And you can use tiny jump rings if you want instead. You're going to get a little bit more length if you do. So now I've got these three. I am going to put one more length here on my pendant simply so that I have a length to connect to my necklace. So it's just going to be by itself. So I'll just do six more links. One, two, three, four, five, six. Open the six, sixth link and slide it on here. Now, we're going to do the same thing with these two, except for on our extra links on the end here, we're going to only use, oh, probably four of our links instead of six. And you'll open it up on the fourth one and connect it. So go ahead and cut a length of six links and put these two together and then cut a length of four links and connect it on here and we'll be right back. Okay, so this is what you should have. You should have four links hooked on one end and then two crystals hooked together. Then here you should have three crystals hooked together with six links in between and then six links on the end of one of the three. Just like this. And then we're going to set this just aside. <clears throat> now I've cut five links of my chain here and I've got a head pin. We're going to make some little dangle decorations that look something like this. Now they can all be a little different. I'm going to show you basically how to make one. And then, um, and we're also going to wrap a few of the crystals here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use one of our head pins. Now these little short head pins are great for th just this little single small thing we're going to do. And I think Shirley's got a mixture of them on her website, budgetbeads.shop, that you can find. Or you can just cut yours down or just use a long one. It's fine. Whatever you have on hand will work. So I've dropped one of my little 4 millimeter round electroplated round beads on. And on a head pin and just above, let me get you really close here, oh, focus, focus, are we going to focus? There we go. Just a little bit above this little bead, I don't even, I can't talk right now, sorry. Just a little bit above the bead, we're going to place a flat nose pliers and then we're going to bend this wire over, just like this. So this is what you have. I'm going to place it over my finger here, and then I'm going to cut it down about a quarter of an inch, just like this, and cut that off. And then I'm going to grab my round nose pliers, and just a little ways up on my plier, right about here, I'm going to place this at the very end of my wire like this and start to turn. Then I'm going to let go and I'm going to use a little bit closer to the tip of my plier and I'm just going to roll it the rest of the way. So just roll it around into a loop like this. And it's a little bit open right now but that's okay because I'm going to open it bigger and close it anyway. So now I have five links of chain. I'm going to close this link on the end here because it's open. Let me back off just a little and make sure that actually go ahead and open it. Let's do this. It's going to be easier this way. I am going to close this little guy here. You can either open or close and I'm going to close it just by opening it, twisting it open and then pushing it over as I close it again by twisting it shut. So I've just closed the loop is what I've done. Now this one's open so I can just scoop this right onto this open chain here. And close it. Make sure it's closed well. And set these little chains, you know. So you have one pearl on the end of this little chain here. I'm going to make another pearl and I'm going to connect it to the chain right above it. So let's go ahead and make a pearl. 
or these aren't pearls, but you know, bead. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to place my pliers a little bit above that bead so that I have enough room to bend that over without breaking my bead. And then place it over my finger, hold it between my thumb and my forefinger here, place it over my finger, cut it down about a quarter of an inch. You can make it a little longer than I'm doing too, so you have a little bit bigger loops. It'd probably be easier to handle if you do. And then I'm just going to roll this one. So I think I cut this one kind of short, but that's okay. I'll manage it one way or the other. And once I get it rolled like this, to enclose, now I can open this little loop. My loops are a little small. I'll make them a little bit bigger. I'll cut my wire a little bit longer. So that's going to gauge what how big of a loop you're going to make is how long you cut your wire. So then I'm going to open this loop by twisting it like this. I'm going to pick up my chain. I'm going to slide that loop onto the second link right above the one that I put the other one on and just close this little loop. Make sure I got it closed. When you twist it open, you can kind of push towards the other side of the link, the closed side, and then close it tighter. So once you get it closed on there, this is what you should have. Now you're going to make one more and put it on this side. Just this link here. Now, if you make longer, if you decide you want to make a longer length or you want to make fuller dangles, you can do that too. Cut more chain, put more links on or more um, bobbly beads on it. And I'll show you what I mean by that. But let's go ahead and do this now. I'm doing my five links. I put two on this end, one on the two, one each on the two end links. Now I'm going to put one on this link. And then I will be back and show you what we're going to do with Okay, that. so I have made my pearl, or <laughs> my bead, and we're going to call them pearls, heck. So anyway, I've made my little dangle on this side now. I have two on this side. Get you close so you can see. Now what I'm going to do is I've just taken one link off of my chain. Wait a minute. That's not focused. I've taken one link off my chain and it's open as you can see and I can open it a little more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the second link here and it can be any one that you want. It doesn't really matter. But the way I want it to lay is I want this one to be a little shorter than these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this second link right here and I'm going to grab it with the link that I have on my plier. Let me open this a little bit more. So I'm just going to open this link a little bit more if I can get a hold of it here. And I'm going to grab onto this link right here. Get you closer. Ah, focus, focus, focus. There we go. So this is what I have. Now I'm going to grab my piece that I've made, it doesn't matter which one, and on the link above the one that's attached to the pendant, I'm going to put this dangle on. And you can put them anywhere you want, but this is the way I want to do it, is in this second link right here, and close this. Make sure it's closed tight. And then this is what I have now. I have a little dangle right above my crystal. Now you could put another one on this side of the chain and, and make another one here if you'd like. You can make as many or as few as you'd like. I'm going to continue making some of the little dangles like this and some of them can be different. You want one that's a little bit longer for the top here. 
for the very top one, I made one that's about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's about seven links or eight links, and then I put three beads on the bottom and just attached one bead towards the top a little bit more. So see, it's just a long dangle like this. So you can make them any length you want. But um, the top one, we want it to be a little bit longer so that when we put these on our jump ring to make our dangle, we have some fullness here. Actually, this one's probably a little too long. I may adjust it down so that my fullness is right above my crystals. Because this one only has four links, it's not enough to actually put a big dangle on. So I'm making one to go in the middle that will help cut, um, dangle around this top bead. So you can make it, I'm probably going to make mine six links and um, put several beads on it. Just like this, I'll just reduce it. So what you're going to do is you're going to continue making little bobbles on your chain. Pick it up like I showed you in the middle with a link like this. So I've got several little beads on here, two on one end, one on the other. I'm going to pick it up with one of my links and then this is what I'll have. I can attach it to the second bead above each crystal. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make several of these and put them above each one. So five of them basically. And then um, we'll, have, we'll have one longer one and four shorter ones above each one. And then we're going to make some crystals the same way. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab one of our crystals, back off a little, same thing, we're going to drop it on the bead. We're going to grab our flat nose and right a little ways above that bead, we're going to bend that over like this. And then I'm going to put it on my finger, just kind of hold it like an L, and then I'm going to cut this one a little bit longer. I want my links to be a little bit bigger and fling it across the room. Then I'm going to grab my round nose pliers, begin turning this loop straighten it out, and then with these you can just hook them directly to the chain. So let's say I have this one and I have this little dangle here. So maybe I want a crystal up here. So I will just, and you decorate these any way you want. I'm not showing you exactly where to put each one. It doesn't matter. And when you hold them up and see how they dangle and you don't like where a placement of something is, you can just move it. But I'm showing you basically where I'm going to put mine. So I've gotten about three links down. I'm going to put this one on. Straighten it back out. Look at what I've got. Now oh, that's going to be on that side and so is this. So I may move it over to this side of the link. So let me just open that up. So all I have to do if I want to change it is just grab that link, twist it up, Lay your chain out so you can see exactly how things are going to lay. Uh, let me see. Sometimes they get all tangled in themselves and do weird things. So this dangle is actually over here. So what I want to do then is I want to put this one on this side of the links just so that it dangles a little bit differently when I hold it up. I like to balance my dangles. If I put one on one side of the chain, and you just have to lay your chain out. When you pick it up and turn it over, it'll look like it's on a different side than what you started with. but it really is only dangling to one side of the chain. So you pick up the chain and straighten it up, lay it out on your bead mat so you can see exactly where you're putting your dangles and then you can continue working down the chain, putting, maybe you want to put your 
um, pearl dangles up a little higher and your red one down a little lower. Make sure that, let's say, we put our pearls on this side on this one. So we'll go on this side of the links on this one, put a red one here, and just decorate up your links with a bunch of your little guys like this. All you have to do is have some of your links open and use them to connect. So I can pick this one up here and make sure it's open enough. And let's lay this one out and see. So I think I want to go about here on my links. And now I have a dangle. Now I can go here on the second one. And since that one's dangling to that side, I'll have this one dangle to this side. I'll close it. Let's see if I actually closed that. Yeah, I did. And then you'll have to lay it all out again because you'll mess it all up. So you just find the end of your chain. Lay it out. Arrange it so you can see where your dangles are. That one's on that side, that one's on that side, that one's there. And then I can put another red one on, or I could put another one of these on. You can make this as full as you want. You don't have to put them on the little um, chains either. You can directly hook one of these little um, links directly to the chain too. So however you want to do it, just like we did with this red one. So decorate those up, decorate up both of them. And then we will connect them together and then we will make a necklace. Okay, so now you can see what I've done. I've just laid them out so that I can see how they're going to look. I want these pendants to kind of go this way and these to kind of go this way. So I laid it out and then I put my red crystals on some chain and connected it on on one side and my little pearls on the other and just, just spread it out and made it look as even as I could just so that the look is kind of flowing and you don't have a bunch of stuff on one side and not on the other and so on and so forth. And so this is basically, I made one longer pearl one than the short ones that I was putting one link above. And I put two or three links above. What did I put? Three links above. So you just kind of spread them out and see how they look. Once we put them on the jump ring and pick it up, we can also see how it looks. If we don't like it, we can lay it back out and rearrange it again. So it's just a random thing. You don't have to do it exactly how I have done it. Just do it how it looks good to you. Now, I have these two links on top here, and I have one of my jump rings that came in my bag, and I'm just going to scoop up the two top here, the two top links. But I've also made a little white bundle, and I'm going to put it on in between the two links on the top here. So now I have a little bundle on the very top too. And you can also add something to this chain if you'd like. I might add a little red one or something. And we'll see how that looks. I'm going to close this jump ring. These are nice strong jump rings so it takes a second to manipulate them. Close it nice and tight. And then I'm going to take another jump ring open it up and put it on that jump ring. Just like this. And this is the jump ring we'll string into our necklace. Now I can pick it up and look at my bundle and see what it looks like. And it looks pretty. I like it. It looks good. So I can kind of lay it down so you guys can see. You can't really see. I can't hold it right. But that's basically how that's going to look. I'm just going to have a nice bundle that will dangle down on my 
necklace. So now I'm going to set this aside, keep the jump ring where I can find it, and just set it aside, and then we are going to begin making our necklace Okay, portion. so the first thing I did, just so that I'm prepared, is I've cut two equal portions of chain about five inches long. I'm shooting for about a 20 inch necklace, so that this dangle lays down low on my chest and um, is a really nice focal piece for like a sweater or something. You can always adjust this area so that you have a shorter and longer necklace. But you have to take into consideration that the dangle is going to hang down low. So I've cut about five inches and then um, of chain, making sure they're equal lengths. And then I've grabbed a jump ring from the bag and I opened it. And I just put on one end of my clasp and I'll put this one on this end. Just put it right onto the chain here with the jump ring. And then close it by twisting it. Get you close. And this is what I have now. Then I'm just going to set these two lengths of chain aside. Now, you're going to want to cut about 11 inches of wire just to make sure that you have enough to feed through your, your crimp tube. You're going to want to have two crimp tubes out, so I have size two crimp tubes, and I have some soft flex medium, <clears throat> 11 inches long. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the jump ring on my dangle, and I'm going to feed my wire through that jump ring. Make sure your jump ring is closed tightly and lay out your necklace, the dangle, the way that you want it. And then we are going to start stringing this. So I think what I want to do is I want to put a um, bead cap on either side. Now these bead caps are kind of big for these beads, but it makes kind of a cool effect. So I'm going to use them anyway. So I'm going to put a bead cap the bottom first or the top of the bead cap through my wire so that the flared part is out on either side. Center my wire like this and let me get some of this stuff out of the way, rearrange my camera a little and get you in so that you can see that's how that looks. Let me zoom out a little bit here and then I'm going to pick up one of my red 8x6 crystals on either side. And I'm just going to work from the center out on my wire here. Then I'm going to pick up a four millimeter round and put it in between. I'm going to put another red bead on so that will be in between. Like this, get another red bead. And then another red bead on this side. Come here, hold. Center my wire again. It's going to move around. I'm going to move these little crimp beads out of the way. That's what I have so far. Now I'm going to grab another bead cap on this side and put it down, the flared part down towards the bead like that and just encase these beads. It's kind of a cool look. Even though the bead caps are a little big, they make kind of an interesting look. The bead just kind of peeks out like this. And then I think I am going to go ahead and put five of my bicone crystals on. So I'll grab these. Well, keep getting a four millimeter round in my hand. And I'm going to put five bicones on. Either side. And then I'll repeat this section. So then after I've done this, this is what I'm going to do. Is repeat with the bead cap the red bead 
the white bead, the little four millimeter round, the red bead, and a bead cap. And then I think I'm going to put six bicone crystals on this side and a red bead and a bead cap. And we'll be back. I'll do this side also and I'll show you exactly what I've done so that you can see what it looks like. Just keep your wire centered because it's going to move around. So just keep centering your wire and I'll be right back after I have completed beading this and show you exactly the pattern that I've established. Okay, so I have finished my stringing. Let me bring this down so I can show you exactly what I have. So what I have done is I put the bead cap, the 8x6, the 4mm round, the 8x6, the bead cap, and then five of my bicone crystals, bead cap, 8x6, 4mm round, 8x6, bead cap, and then six bicone crystals. Did you think? Yep, six. And then an 8x6 and a bead cap. And then I repeated it on the other side so that it's symmetrical. Then I just clipped off one side. And I'm going to now connect this chain to this side of the necklace. Make sure that your link is nice and closed. And then drop a crimp tube down your wire like this. And then grab your chain, put it on the wire, go around the wire into the bead cap, and I'm just going to go through the bead cap and the crystal simply so that my bead cap doesn't stand up strange. I'll go through the crystal also. And then I'm just going to pull this wire down. Let me get you close. I'm going to pull it down until I have a small loop around the chain. So that there's still some movement, but it's not a real big loop. And then I'm going to make sure the best I can that everything is parallel inside that crimp tube. And then I'm going to grab my crimping tool. Now, you can see that it's loosening up over here. That's okay because my other side is loose and I can tighten it up. We do want to have good tension on these beads because of the fact that it's going to hold our centerpiece together. So we don't want a lot of space between the beads when we finish this up. So <clears throat> we will adjust that on the other side. And this is soft flex I'm using, so it will flex pretty well and I don't have to worry about it breaking. So I'm going in onto my crimp tube with the second divot on my crimp tool and I'm going to squeeze. And now I have encased my wires in that little crimp tube. They're side by side. You can see that it's parallel. Now I'm going to place that sideways so that the little tubes that I created are touching the crimp tool and I'm going to place it in the first divot, the one closest to the tip, and squeeze. And now I have a nice crimp and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this side now. So I'm going to take this off and pull this wire down so that it's nice and tight. And I can clip this off real close to the bottom of that crystal. Tighten this side over here, and then I will go ahead and put my crimp tube on and do the same thing over here, making sure that there's no spaces so that this holds these two bead caps hold tight together, and my um, jump ring is right in between and it's nice and tight nothing's moving around so it holds everything in the right spot and then I'm going to go ahead and drop my chain down and do the same thing again I'm going to go around the chain into the crimp tube into the crystal and then 
what I will do is I will grab this side of the loop that I've created, the side that doesn't slide, I'll just hold on to it. And sometimes it helps if you hold on to it with chain nose, and then you can pull that other wire down. Then you won't lose any of your tension. And then you can just adjust it with your fingers the rest of the way. Pull that down to where the loop is about the same size as it is on the other side. And then do the same thing with your crimping tool. I generally try when I pull mine through to make sure that I put the loop when I bring the wire through, I put it next to where the wire is already through so that it's parallel. And then place your crimp tool in the first divot and squeeze. Now I have two little tubes encasing the separate parts of my wire here. So you can see. And now I'm going to place that sideways in the first divot so that the two little tubes are touching the crimp tool and then squeeze them together. And I have a nice crimp. And then I can just cut this off really close to my crystal. And then let me get everything out of the way here and I'll show you my necklace. So, and then you can hold this up and you can see on your jangles if you like the way that it looks. And it looks pretty good when I pull, hold mine up. My All of my little dangles lay on top of my bigger crystals. And they are still, you can still see them well, but they hang as a cluster and it's really pretty. So let me straighten this up, lay it out, and I'll show you what we have. And this is what my necklace looks like. And I tried it on, looks really pretty, hangs really nice. And as I said, if something's not hanging quite right or looking quite right to you, you can always move your dangles around on the chains so that you can make them look just the way you want them to look. And this is a nice long dangle that will dangle over the front of your chest and over a nice sweater or something. And it's really, really pretty. It turns out really nice. Okay, let's say you don't want to go through all the dangle rig rigmarole. You can use your crystals that you wrapped or just put a jump ring through this, like this. You can just cut six links of chain and put them together. So let me show you. Six, five, however many you want. I, I find that six is about right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Enough space between them to where it makes a pretty nice layout for your necklace. So what I do is the same thing I did before. I count six links of chain, open the last link up, take the length of chain off, and then just put it on your crystals. Close it out. like this. And then I will open this link on this side. So you can do this with five or seven crystals. You want an odd number so that you have a center focal here. You, you have it in the center. It looks better if you have an odd number. And this one, I went ahead and did the little spirals on it, on the front. So I'll put that one in the center, since it's the oddball. And let me connect this one. So I'm just going to connect my next one. I've opened this link. I'm going to drop my next one on, if I can get this link to open enough. There we go. I'm just not opening that enough. And then I'll close that link. Of course, you can use little tiny jump rings too. You don't have to open your links of chain, but I'm just finding that it's working fine. So now I'll just continue connecting those with six links of chain. Then I'll cut a longer length in the back, show you what I'm going to do. And you'll 
I'll show you what this necklace will look like just plain like this. Of course, you could always put dangles on the chain in between too if you would like. Let me finish this up and I'll show you what okay, it looks like. Okay, so now you can see I've, con I've connected all mine together. I went ahead and used seven because it makes more of a rounded look. It just fills in the neckline more. So I went ahead and put seven on here. That would also leave you two more to make a pair of earrings. So then I just went ahead and attached clasp to the end of the chain. I didn't even use a jump ring. I just opened a link. It'd be more secure if you used a jump ring, but I'm just kind of showing you this as an alternative because I know I don't have a lot of people designing with my stuff to show you different methods. So I'm just going to show you a few methods to do with these crystals. So then I'm just going to attach the chain onto this last one on either side and I will have a necklace. And like I said, if you wanted to, you could attach little looped beads to the chain in between and have little dangles too. I would keep them short, but you don't necessarily have to. You could do it any way you wanted. Whatever looks pretty to you is what matters. So I put that side on and then I'm gonna put this side on and we'll have another necklace. And then I'll wrap a couple more and we can just pop them on ear wires or we can put a few dangles on the loops to make it a little bit fancier. And you've got several things that you've done with your beads. So, now I have a necklace that will lay out really pretty on the neck. If I could make it look halfway decent. Come on, you. My chain is all weird on this side. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, let me fix this. I've got one twisted or something. I think it's twisted. There we go. Okay. And now I've got a really simple but really pretty necklace. This will lay out like this on your neckline. Of course, this will go around your neck. And you could put dangles in between whatever you wanted but that's that's another idea get you in closer and then you could also if you wanted to you could use these individually as pendants and just put them on a piece of chain or string something and all you'd have to do is put a pinch bail on these so i know shirley at budget beads has some pinch bales and i have a few not a lot um, that'll fit on here, but I can list those. Let me find my pinch bales and I'll put one on and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you a really quick, easy way that you can also use these pendants. Now you could just string it right on a piece of beading chain like this or a piece of beading wire and bead around it. You could just string it right on like that and maybe put a bead on either side or a bead cap or whatever. You could put a little bead on either side if you wanted or string the whole thing, whatever. Use beading wire and s string it up or you can get some of these little um, pinch bales. And Shirley has some that have little rhinestones on them that are really cute. She has some different ones. You'll want to check out her shop if you want a little different one. I have some of these just like this and I can put them up, maybe put four or five in a package or something. All I'm going to do is put my pliers inside them and just gently open it. These are pretty easy to open. So just open it gently. And then I'm going to put my pendant inside here. It's still not quite open enough, so I will open it a little more. And I will put the hole right on these little spikies. Just like that. And then just squeeze it shut with my fingers like this. And then I have a nice little bail on my big crystal here. And all I have to do is put it on my piece of beading wire. So let's say I want to string this on here. I just want a little crystal necklace. If you wanted to, you could put a couple beads on either side, stabilize it with some crimp beads. I have a video called Beading Chain 101 that can show you all kinds of things to do with this. Basically, I'm just going to show you something really simple. I've got these little clamshell ends because you have to 
end your beading chain somehow. And you can get beading chain at budgetbeads.shop also. I have a little bit, only in the silver, and um, I don't intend to restock it. So Shirley is going to be exclusively selling that. So if you would like some, you can get some there. And then I'm going to take the end, so I've cut about 18 inches of beading chain, and I'm going to take the end, I'm going to slide my clamshell on from the bottom part, so the opening will be away from the chain, like this. Let me show you. So I'm holding it to where the opening is over my finger, and I'm going to thread it into the bottom of the clamshell. Sometimes you cut your chain a little weird and it won't go through very well. My chain's a little roughly cut, but it'll still go through. And then I'm just going to drop that clamshell down. Then I'm going to pick up a little size 1 crimp tube. You can use a size 2, 2, whatever you would like. And then I am just going to slide that crimp tube on the end of my wire or my beading chain here and just slide it down a little bit and then just crimp this. Now because I'm only doing one squeeze, this isn't all that secure, you would take some beading glue, like jewelry metal glue like I have here, or um, something similar, and just put a dot on that. Cut this down just a little bit, because it's just a little long, and put a dot of glue either on it or on inside your clamshell. So I'm going to move my clamshell up the chain like this. Put a little dot of glue in here. And then just close my clamshell like this. And one end is finished. And I can do the exact same thing on the other end. Put on your clamshell first. And this will make a really fast, easy, pretty Christmas gift. And like I said, you can bead other things on here. And you may want to check out the video I mentioned, the um, Beading Chain 101. It's in my playlist. You'll, you'll find it. And you can learn all kinds of different ways to do your beading chain. So I have put this little crimp tube on. Get you close. I'm moving it up to the top here kind of close to the end and squeezing. Now if you're going to use a size 2 crimp bead, just use your crimping tool just like you're crimping an end and then just kind of reduce it down by squeezing it a few times. I'm going to cut that down a little bit. I'm going to bring my clamshell up and then pull that down all the way. Put a little drop of glue in there. If I can get some out, there I go. And then I can just close this, either with my fingers or with my chain nose. And now I have an end. There are other ends. There are other ways to do this. These are pretty easily had. I know Shirley has some um, of these little clamshells. And um, I have some. I can list some, too. Um, you don't need... To get real elaborate with this, you can do it just like this, and then you can take a jump ring and open it up. Well, oh, geez Louise. Open your jump ring like this, and then just slide it on this end. And like I said, I'm not being really detailed, but there is a video that will be very detailed. So if um, I'm confusing you or something, just reference that and that will help you. Now we need another jump ring. See if I can find one in my big mess here. We'll put a small jump ring on the other side and connect the, a lobster claw clasp is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just open this little jump ring. This is probably a three millimeter jump ring. 
You can use whatever size you want. I'm just going to open this up, put the lobster claw clasp on here, close it, and voila, a really fast, really pretty necklace. Let me show you. And bring this down, get my mess out of the way. So here's the other necklace. And now I have a necklace, just that fast. Just really pretty, really simple. If seasonal, I mean, that would be really pretty for Christmas. It's just really nice. And it only took me a couple minutes to make. And you could make nine of those because you have nine pendants in there, nine pendant beads. And then I'm going to show you how to make a pair of earrings with these little drops and then we'll be done with this particular project, this particular part of the box. Okay, so I have wrapped two more crystals and again, you can do this with the, just a large jump ring through the crystal. You don't have to do the wrapping if you're finding it difficult. So what I've done is I've created this earring. Let me see if I can hold it up so you can see what it looks like. So how I've done this it's really cute. They just dangle in front. If I could hold it up so that you could see it better, you would see how cute it is. But I can't, so I'll try again in a minute. What I've done is I've wrapped another one. Like I said, you can just put a jump ring through it. And then what I'm going to do is I have one wrapped four millimeter round glass bead. And I'm just going to open the wrap. And let's see, I have it hanging on the outside. So I'm just going to hang it on the loop and close close the loop. Push it back over there. So I want them to mirror each other. And then this is going to be the front of my earring. So I'm going to open my ear wire. Just open it like that. And then I'm going to pop it on my bead, close it, and then I have wrapped a crystal and a four millimeter round and I put it on one chain link. So I just took one of the links from the chain, my pliers are getting magnetized here, and let's see, did I put it towards the inside? Okay, so I have this bead towards the left here. And what I've done is I hold my ear wire to where the front of it is going to be exposed, right here. And I'm just going to put this chain link right on that ear wire and close it. Now let's see. If I have them mirrored. Yeah, I don't have them mirrored. I'll have to turn my um, thing around. I have it on backwards. So let me just turn it around. It's not really going to be that noticeable, but I'm going to do it anyway. So let me turn this around like this. Put it back on. Just like this. And you have some really cute little dangles. Of course, you can just drop the ear wire right on the crystal too. You don't have to actually put the dangles on. It would be just as cute. I think I have one wrapped here. So let me just put an ear wire on and you can see what it looks like with just an ear wire. And again, you can just put a large jump ring through the crystal and pop one of these on too and it will work just fine. You could also hang dangles off the actual circle here too, or off the jump ring if you do it that way. But that's what that looks like. Just a really cute, simple earring. Just a little solitaire, like that. And that's what that looks like. 
and I will show you all the projects I made and we'll call this video finish. And here are the pieces that we've made today. So I just wanted to make sure you had a few options and a few ways to use the crystals that came in the box. So this is what I have made and of course you can modify it in any way you want. These are just a few ideas and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.